Hi guys and welcome back to this brand new video. Today I'm going to show you how to use GIMP. This is going to be a beginner's tutorial. So I'm going to go over all of the tools, the tabs, and also going to show you how to make a thumbnail within GIMP. So by the end you have most of the basics. But first guys, if you want, you can go down on this video in the comment section and click on the first comment that I pinned. This will bring you to my Fiverr and here you can get a YouTube logo and banner or a modern minimalist YouTube logo and banner for your YouTube channel. But now back to the video. Now, if you don't have GIMP yet, up here in the right corner, I have a video on how to download and install GIMP in case you didn't have it yet. Now, GIMP itself is actually a very good alternative to Photoshop. So if you don't have Photoshop, GIMP is a very complete alternative to Photoshop. It has a lot of similar features and really all of the tools to make a good thumbnail like you could in Photoshop, for example. But I'm just going to jump right in here. I'm going to start the thumbnail. We're going to go to File, go to New. I want to keep this at 920 by 1080 pixels. Some people might say 1280 by 720, but nowadays really every thumbnail, every video on YouTube is 920 by 1080 pixels. So don't hesitate to take this resolution right here. And if you go actually down here in the advanced options, you can just keep this as well. I do advise you to make sure that this is RGB color and for the rest really nothing much to change here so then we can click ok here as you can see here's our canvas now in previous versions of gimp it didn't look like this because here you can see the tools are grouped but in case you don't want it to be grouped i can simply show you that for a second here you want to go to edit here now as you can see here you also have other actions like undo and redo you can copy cut and paste here and of course here next to it you also have like these shortcuts on the keyboard you can do in case you didn't know but anyway i'm just going to go to preferences here go to toolbox and here it says use two groups. And if you uncheck this one, as you can see, all of the tools are here singled out and you can just individually click them here. But I'm just going to go with groups. Why not? But if that's something you want, you just have to do that and click OK. Now then I'm actually going to do something that will help us create the thumbnail to make sure that everything is a bit better arranged, aligned, if you will. And to do that, I'm actually going to go to. So I'm going to go up here to the view tab. Now here in the view tab, you can actually see multiple things. You can, for example, go full screen if you want to see that. And here you can, for example, unselect the selections, the guides and grid, which I will go to in a minute. And as you can see here, so really this is going to be basically things you want to show and unshow, as well as the rulers up here. But basically what I'm going to do right now is show grid. And as you can see, this is too many, so I'm actually going to change that. I'm going to go to image. Now same here, you have some other different things like transform, where you can actually transform them, rotate the image in question. You also have some crop options here. But I'm just going to go here and do configure grid. And I'm going to make this 120. And click enter and just click OK. And as you can see, it's way better, it's way clearer for me to work with. And next, what you also want to do then, which is going to make it even easier, is go back to view here and do snap to grid. This will mean that it'll actually attach to these grids right here, these squares. So that's actually more aligned and better to work with. Now, then the last thing, this is also something I use in Photoshop. I'm going to go back to image and do guides. I'm going to do new guide by percent. Here, I'm going to do horizontal. I'm just going to click OK. And I'm going to go back here. Same thing. I'm going to go to guides, new guide by percent. And this time, I'm going to do vertical. I'm going to click OK. As you can see, it created these two lines exactly in the middle here which will distinguish our canvas here and make it easier to work with. So these are a bit more advanced options, but it will simplify the work we were going to do. Because as I said, it's going to be way easier to align, put things in the middle and some things next to each other. As you can see, it doesn't take up that much time and yet it's going to help us so much in making this thumbnail. Okay, so then I'm actually going to import our first image here. Now there are two ways to do that. Now the first option here is going to go to file. Then you're going to go to open as layers. And as you can see here, then here you have to browse on your computer what you actually want to, want to import. As you can see, I have these two images here. You just have to double click on it or you click open here but actually the second way to actually import media is for example if i go here to file explorer as you can see i have here already images prepared and what i can simply do then is actually drag also an image onto here and as you can see there we go there it is now i can actually just as you can see it's actually snapping to the grid as you can see you're in the middle so now i know it's in the middle well now it's not exactly in the middle like this on purpose i want it to be a bit out of the middle here i'm just going to place it around here i would say and now as you can see you also added another layer and that's something you can see right here so as you can see we have the background layer obviously here and we also have the layer that's currently selected as you can see which is going to be the gimp logo right here now as i showed earlier we're actually of the selection tool which is this one right here which you can align and move around so that's going to be your basic tool to really place any of your images basically where you want now, if I, for example, want to change the size of this image, I'm actually going to go up here to this tool here, which is going to be the scale tool. It's going to right click so that it can actually have the other options here. And basically what I can also do then is rotate, you know, as you can see, I'm just rotating the image here. You can click reset. Then you can put shear. So it's going to take off a bit of the top flip. I don't think I have to show you everything. There you go. That's flipping. Perspective is also nice because for something that is free, this is actually very complete to actually be able to also play with the perspective like you can do in Photoshop, obviously. And also a 3D transform. So you can give it more of a 3D look to it right here. And so let's actually think what I'm going to do here. I think I'm going to make it more 3D. Something like this. 
why not? And then you could have also handled transform. So that's basically when you put, that's basically where you deform the object yourself to your liking. There you go. So here we already have a start. And I can also, as you can see, with the little loop here, zoom in, zoom out. You can just use your control button and your mouse scroll, as you can see. Like this, you can simply just zoom in and zoom out. In case, by the way, this image is PNG, so it means it has no background. It's a transparent background, so we only have this logo right here. But in case it has a background, there are a couple of tools you could use to actually cut it out. That's going to be this tool right here, called the Free Select tool. This is also called the Lasso tool in Photoshop. And basically will allow you, if you put some points here, to basically stick to the image. Basically trying to get as close as possible. That's in case you want to, of course, cut out an image in question. But I don't have to do that in this case. So I can just do backspace and make sure that all the points are removed. There we go. Scissor select is approximately the same thing. This will actually help by itself to actually make sure it's as close to the corners as possible here. So that is actually something also really nice that you can use. But then you can actually just click here and remove the dots by clicking on them. There we go. Here you have the fuzzy select tool, also known as the magic wand in Photoshop. And you can actually just select. You can actually just select a certain region of an image, as you can see, and then remove it or fill it with something. So that's something alternative you could do in case you actually need to cut out an image. But if, by the way, I want to deselect something, because you see I have a selection here, but I don't want to do anything with that selection i can go to select here basically here you have all of the options you can select all here so basically a ctrl a and actually also invert a certain selection here some other more detailed things like a feather i actually put on a border just by simply doing the select tool and lastly you can also do the path here so this making a path is also going to make sure you can actually that you're able to put on your own terms without any help dots around a certain object or image same here make sure you click on it then you can do backspace to delete it but now I'm actually going to make the background a different color. So I'm going to make sure that the background layer here is selected. You can, by the way, also hide the image in question by doing this little eye right here. As you can see, now it would be transparent. And here, as you can see, I have the background back. So I'm going to make sure it's selected right here. And I'm actually going to go to this one right here, which is going to be the bucket fill tool. You can right click. You also can see, as you can see, I have a gradient, so, so multiple colors. But I just want a simple bucket fill with one color. Actually going to use this red color here. Simply have to click wherever here on the background. Once again, make sure the background layer is selected. Click on it right here, and as you can see, with one click, our background is now red, as you can see right here. Now I'm going to make sure that the actual GIMP logo is selected again. And actually going to give him a drop shadow. So for that, I'm going to go up here to filters. Here you also have different filters, like for example, blur. So you can obviously most famously use Gaussian blur. That's the one that's mostly used. And also, of course, have a lot of different kind of motion blurs, a lot of different ones. We can also distort an image, add some noise to it. But basically what we want is go to light and shadow here. And actually going to go down here to drop shadow. Now here there's going to be opacity, so how visible you want it to be. I think I'm going to keep it like around 70. I'm going to put this like at, I think not too much, maybe like 25. And as you can see right here, he has a drop shadow. And I can actually also do something else. For example, if I go to the colors tab here, you can see you have your color balance here. You have some exposure, some saturation. You can play with the levels and the curves. All options that are actually within Photoshop as well. As you can see, if I do, for example, bright and contrast here here as you can see we have the different levels and if you look at the logo if you look at the gimp logo as you can see now i'm doing the brightness that's going to be a bit darker same with the contrast you know i can make it a bit darker as you can see the more contrast the darker the image will get so you can basically just play around a bit here with brightness and contrast then you can click ok here but i'm then going to go back to filters here now then i'm going to add actually another layer and i'm going to do that by going down here as you can see it's create a new layer i'm going to click on it you can name this whatever you want i'm going to say vignette why not and these are optional. That's really up to you. I'm going to do transparency here. Make sure that that one is selected. And if you want to do the same thing I do, I'm going to click OK here. And so then I'm going to go back to filters, light and shadow. And I'm going to do vignette. And as you can see, I think you have an idea of what a vignette actually is here. Circles around the corner here. So first of all, I do want to change the color right here. Make this a bit darker red. Something like this maybe. Because then we can already play with the radius. I'm going to put a bit like this maybe. So I think I'm going to keep it at something like this right here. Then if I go to the softness here, you can see these are all details we can change here. Just make sure it's in the center. I'm just going to click OK here. Now this is a small detail, but it's a nice little detail, you know. And it isn't really visible now, so if you want, for example, you can do this from time to time yourself. Go to View, put off most of the selections here. Show Guides and Show Grid right here. And as you can see, this is what it looks like right now with all, all of the selections, without all of without the guide and the grids that I added. And as you can see, this is what it looks like right now. I'm actually going to add text right now. So just make sure that I reselect all of these right here. And so I'm going to go to the little A right here. It's going to be our text tool. Just select it anywhere on the canvas here. I'm going to make sure the color is white then. Otherwise, I'm not going to see anything. It's going to be red. So I'm going to type beginner guide here. 
I have to make sure that actually all of the letters are selected and here you can do the size for example. Obviously here we saw the color, you can also do the font right here. And also have the options like the bold, italic, the underline or the strike through. So there you go, as you can see I have the text right here. I'm actually going to place it in the middle with the selection tool. There you go, now our text is in the middle. Now actually make then sure that the logo here in case and the drop shadow as well if you did that are both selected. You can do that by clicking this right here and this one right here. It creates kind of a chain, meaning that these two layers can now be moved together. And as you can see if I take the selection tool again, I can in fact move them together so as i said i'm going to place it a bit further away let's say around here as you can see it's also overlaying with the vignette here so if you want to have that on top you can always put the layer vignette underneath here as you can see to give it a priority so that obviously the image that is above is above the other layer also on the canvas but anyway i kind of liked it that he was under the vignette that he has like a kind of a fade away here actually gonna add a second image here you may have seen it earlier on so i'm gonna go back to my file explorer here and drag in this second image right here as you can see it's way too big here so i'm gonna make sure that this when it's selected, I'm going to put it above here. So what I'm going to do then is actually go here back to the scale tool here and basically make sure that this one is smaller. Now, if you want to move it, by the way, make sure you have this one in the middle so you can actually move the image in question. And also in case you wanted to maintain his ratio that you click on this one right here, because if this is unchecked, as you can see, it can take on any form. So make sure that this one here is selected. But anyway, as I said, I'm just going to put this to the right size. I want to basically put this above here. I can also from time to time check from afar here. So if you click, for example, right here, you can see how the film is going to look from afar. It's important. So there you go. It's, it's going to be slightly smaller. I'm just going to move this right here. And then I'm going to do scale. And there we go. I'm move it with the tool here. Now, I do want to make this white, so I'm going to cheat a bit here. I'm going to select the bucket tool here. I also have, to, of course, the brush tool and the eraser tool. They speak pretty much for themselves. The brush can add some brushes. You can do it yourself. And basically, with the eraser, you can really erase some parts of any layer. So I'm going to do a bucket fill here. I'm going to actually make this the foreground color white. I'm just going to simply click on the letters here. Now, as you can see, I'm a bit cheating here because it's in a transparent image. There you go. I'm just going to change that back. So I'm going to put this up a little bit. As you can see, this is not like the most, as you can see, this is not like the most extraordinary thumbnail out there. This is really give you an example on the basics specifically. So what I'm going to do then is actually I'm going to go to the rectangle tool here and I'm going to make a rectangle. So I'm going to make sure that beginner's guide here is selected. I'm going to make like a rectangle around here. And so then what I'm going to basically going to do is make a new layer here down again. Once again, I'm going to call this rectangle. Click OK here. I'm going to put this on top here. And basically what I'm going to do then is going to go to the bucket fill tool once again and then I'm going to make sure it's a different color here. I'm going to make this a bit darker here then make sure it's selected and i'm gonna simply click here go to the selection tool and actually make sure the rectangle is underneath here as you can see as you can see it's like just a rectangle around the text i'm just gonna do this select here and so while it's selected here i'm gonna right click here and do alpha to selection i'm gonna go to the select tab here and do two path so that I can actually make some changes so i'm gonna also make sure that the, my foreground color is white for example in this case and then i'm gonna go to edit and do stroke path and here I can basically decide what kind of path I want. So I'm going to make sure this is on solid color. I'm going to change this to like 15, I would say. And also make sure down here, if I go to line style, that this is a straight line if you want that. And I'm going to do stroke. And as you can see here, well, it's not perfect, but it has like a stroke around it. And we can always go here to the scale tool and actually change this. And there we go. You can also misplace it with the keys here. And then we're going to go put, for example, this one a bit more up to make some space here. Same for our logo here, but it's slightly to this side once again. Also use also, of course, the movement keys here on your keyboard as i said in the past here you can also undo it here if you go to the edits you can also undo things here in the history if for example you see here the whole history of what you've done or you can also just do ctrl z of course to go back and last things that didn't show up here of course is layers you can change everything that has to do with layers from actually just creating new ones deleting ones actually transforming here the tools you're gonna have the tools just organized in a different way it's gonna be the same tools as right here you can also pick a color picker so if you want the exact color of a certain part of an image and here in windows you can actually select which one you want to be visible here and what you want to hide same is going to be here in windows and here are some help tools and plugins in case and then i'm going to just put these like around what the middle would be i guess right here and so as you can see i checked all of these once again to actually see it without any of the selection guides or grids as i said pretty simple but as you can see really the essential things are here now last step of course in the process of this is going to be how to save it and for that i'm actually going to go up here to file i'm going to do save as as you can see i want to for example save it here then of course you can up here give it a title so i'm going to say like gimp thumbnail here i'm just going to do save make sure you also select which folder you want it to be in saved you can see the path right here there you go so that was the project file i'm actually going to save it as a gpg 
So instead, I'm just going to do export as. Say, make sure you select the right path where you want it to be saved. You can see here, it has the same title as our project. And here, if you don't want it to be PNG, you can actually go down here and do select file type. And then here you can search for GPG. And there you go. It's going to be this one. As you can see, GPG image. You can click on it and then we do export. Here, the last thing is going to be quality. Just make sure this is 100%. Unless you really want it to bring down a bit for some reason. These are some preferences here. And we can just click export then. There you go. As you can see down here, it showed the path where it has been saved. And with that, we just finished our thumbnail. And you can now ready to go upload it to whatever you're using it for. But in any case, guys, this was really a beginner's tutorial in GIMP. I tried going over most tabs and most tools as best as I could, really showing you the basics without going too much into the advanced options here. So really hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Please leave a like, it would be really nice. Subscribe to us, be really nice. I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye.